Well, hello, everybody, and happy Friday to you. It is the Friday live stream here on reviews.org. I am Craig, uh, and today I'm going to be talking about a couple different things. First of all, I, I want to say, was it last week? It might have been just last week. It might have been two weeks ago because time is a flat circle. I was talking about some great uh, Roku deals on Amazon. Little did I know at the time that the deals would get even better. Okay, so I'm going to bring them up again. We're going to talk about some Roku deals uh, that you can check out, inc including a couple devices that I, I actually really recommend. Um, in fact, I think I... Am I going to talk about... No, I recommend every device that I'm going to talk about today. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Also, the uh, announcement came down the pike yesterday that Amazon is increasing their monthly and annual price for Prime. Uh, so for Prime Video users or watchers, uh, this is of interest. Well, really, it's of interest to anybody who uses Prime for whatever reason. But uh, since I'm the streaming guy, that's the thing I have to concentrate on. Okay, so we're going to be talking all about that. Uh, as we get into it, Eric, hello. Eric asks, what makes it better? I assume you're talking about the Stream Bar Pro, um, the Roku Stream Bar Pro. What makes it better? We're going to talk about that. So hang in there. Sylvia, hello. Um, and hello to anybody else watching. Now, as we get started, don't forget the weekly giveaways go on, are going on. Um, I need to change this. this, this they're uh, bi-weekly giveaways for now. I think we're going to do one every other week. But today we do have a winner. Uh, and the winner today is, uh, let me see if I can pull up the name here. The winner today is Emily Ramlal. Okay, Emily Ramlal. So uh, congratulations to Emily. I hope you're watching. If you're not, that's okay. We're going to email Emily, let her know that she is the winner of a $50 Netflix gift card. Okay, now the next prize, again, this is uh, every two weeks we give these away. Uh, so the next prize is a one-year Disney Plus subscription. So whether you are or aren't a Disney Plus subscriber already, you can win this one. It's a Disney Plus gift card similar to the Netflix one that we just gave away. So go check that out. Uh, go to reviews.org slash giveaways and you too can very, very easily enter for that. Okay, now uh, Joe says hello from Fort Lauderdale, 80 degrees. That sounds miserable, honestly. Like it, that just sounds awful in February. I'm a, I'm, I'm a man who likes his seasons. Uh, and so 80 sounds nice in, you know, June or August, but uh, not in February. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. Aviar says, hi, Craig. Love my Roku Stream Bar Pro. Good. We're going to get there. We'll talk about that. Um, let's see. David Freyden, um, Allen, Allentown. That's how I know you, David. Allentown. You say Allentown. Um, all right. Northeast Ohio from Mel. Mel, I don't know if I've seen your name yet. So if you're new, welcome. If you're not, I apologize for uh, <laughs> for misremembering. Um, okay. What's my opinion of the Bluetooth speakers? It depends on what you're talking about. What Bluetooth speakers? Are you talking about the Roku speakers? Because um, we can talk about that too. And Stacy, Chris, another new name, I think. So hello, everybody. Uh, newcomers and old comers alike. That's a word now, old comers. By the way, how's the mood lighting? Should we should we change it up? We got, uh, I think, purple and like a kind of a greenish, weird greenish yellow. Should we do like a blue? Like a, yeah. How's that? That's, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Mel, you are new here. Well, it's nice to see you. Um, all right. So, Jeff, you are talking about the Roku speakers. Good. All right. So, we will talk about all of that. All right, let's get rid of that for a moment. First of all, before we get to the Roku stuff, and forgive me, I, I it's not like a, a trick or something. I just want to make sure that I get to the Amazon news story before we talk about the Roku stuff. Because once I think, I think once we get into the Roku stuff, it's going to take up the bulk of this stream as we talk about it. Uh, so let's talk about the Amazon one first. Uh, just in case you didn't see it, uh, let's pull this up on screen. Here we go. The, oh, let's hang on. I got to get rid of that comment on the screen. There we go. Um, okay. Amazon Prime rates are increasing. Here's how you can lock in a lower rate. I don't you know. Whatever. Okay. So basically it's do it now. That's their advice. Um, okay. Where's the number? All right. So annual subscriptions. Oh, let's blow this up a little bit for you. Okay. Annual subscriptions will go from 120 to 140. Yeah. I like to round up. Sorry about that, everybody. Thir from 13 per month to 15 per month if you go monthly. Um, Prime is one of those things where if you if you do shop online quite a bit, then 
you probably should do the uh, annual version. Um, I should say if you shop on Amazon quite a bit, then do the annual one just because, yeah, it turns out to be worth it. Um, okay. And then the prime student price is also going from 60 to 70 bucks per year. Okay. So you'll know which camp you fall into, uh, which one you prefer or can uh, use. So let's see, blah, blah, blah. How can you save? Yeah, just sign up uh, for the 30 day free trial sign up now basically what they're saying is that it doesn't go into effect right away it's going into effect here we go the price change will go into effect on february 18th um for new signups so let's see today's the fourth so that's two weeks from today you have two weeks to sign up if you're brand new to it you sign up in two weeks in the next two weeks and you'll get the the current pricing but then the new price will still apply after march 25th um, on the, uh, let's see, on the date of their next renewal. Oh, after March 25th on the date of their next renewal. Okay. So there you go. There's the, uh, the short of it. And let's get rid of that. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's, it's just good to know. I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw that uh, particular news story. So, uh, yeah, let me know. Are you, are you a prime user and why, uh, is uh, basically the question that I have, especially for this audience is whether prime video is incidental or if you subscribe to prime primarily for prime video um does that make sense like is it all about the free shipping and it's like oh hey and they they give me some movies and shows too great i can watch wheel of time and i get you know free shipping or is it like is it the opposite it's like i want to watch all the the movies and shows on prime video and hey whenever i buy something on amazon yeah sure give me the free shipping uh let me know what uh what you think? Um, yeah, and okay, so and let's talk. I, I guess uh, I, I'm interested to hear people's opinions on this. So Frayden says uh, not not very happy about the Prime Video increase. Obviously, nobody would be happy to pay more. But I got to be honest, like it's one of those things where it's like it's been the same price for years, and we've watched. You know, Netflix has probably increased their price five times since since the last time Amazon increased the price for Prime. I, I don't know what the actual number is, but you know what I'm talking about. Same thing with Hulu. Disney Plus has raised their price. You know, like these price increases are a fact of life. Um, and that's just on the streaming side. It's the same thing uh, over on Amazon. They're putting tons of money behind their streaming content. I mentioned the Wheel of Time already. They, that came out uh, late last year. This year, we're getting the Rings of Power. Very excited, actually, for that one. Please be good. Um, and so they're putting all this money behind the streaming content. Uh, well, you know, they got to pay for that somehow. But beyond th that's just for us streamers, right? But beyond that, when we're talking about shipping, um, I, so fun fact, I actually host a podcast on how to start a trucking company. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we talk about, you know, the issues with supply chain stuff and driver shortages and, and all that sort of thing. So we do, t we do talk about that quite a bit. And that is, uh, that is a thing for Amazon. It is tougher now for them to ship than it was, you know, a year or two ago. Um, and it creates increased costs. You know, when you got a driver shortage, um, you're going to be paying higher costs for the drivers you can get, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it's, it's one of those things where it's like, no, I, I don't like it. I don't like paying more, obviously, but I am not going to complain much about it because I understand that the, the costs for Amazon to do business are rising. So, so I'm not going to really throw a fit over it. And it's it's also kind of similar to the uh, recent Netflix price increase where um, I had a couple people <laughs> drop into my DMs on Twitter and say, aren't you so mad about the, the Netflix increase? I'm so mad. I'm so, I'm, I can't believe they're doing this. And my response was, um, did you cancel? Did you cancel Netflix? And they'll be like, well... No, I mean, I mean, I do. I still, I still watch Netflix all the time. I'd be like, well, if you know, unless you're mad enough to cancel it, then you know, what's the use of getting all worked up online, right? So, uh, but Stacy says uh, definitely considering canceling my Prime subscription, but I don't renew until November, so I've got some time. There you go. All right, that's good. Um, let's see. Aviar says uh, more because of shipping than video. Yeah, okay, there you go. Um, but Marianne says it's the opposite. I want that, want that video. Okay. Let's see. It's totally incidental. Are you, uh, Joe, I think you're talking about video. Video is totally incidental for you. And that makes sense. 
Okay, we watch Prime Video some. Yeah, it's one of this. This is the kind of thing where um, when I'm doing lists, when I'm talking about, you know, what are the what are the best streaming services out there? The ones you must have. What like if your budget is this, which streaming services can you do? And I, you know, I do these lists sometimes. And Prime Video is always really tough to consider in those lists because the video and the shipping are tied so tightly together. It, you know, you can't you can't separate it the same way. You can't rate Prime Video the same way that you rate Netflix or that you rate Hulu or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a whole thing. Uh, okay, last increase was 2018. See, this is what I'm talking about. Four years, you know, or you know, close to four years probably. Uh, yeah, it's. I, I think we've been a little bit spoiled uh, on that front. So it's we're just kind of catching up a little bit. Um, <laughs> that's a niche. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I, <laughs> I run a, a just a, a media production business. So I do a lot of YouTube channels and podcasts. And, and that's uh, one of my clients is a guy who does a lot of work with truckers. And so um, it's, it's a really fun show. I actually, it's one of my favorites that I do. So uh, how to start a trucking company. It's called, if you want to look it up, if you ever want to start your own trucking company, it's called Holland Assets. Yes. It's called Holland Assets. No, I didn't come up with the name but I'm all right. I, I, I like the name anyway. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, interesting. So Art, Artie brings up music as well. Video shopping and music. Okay. So Amazon music. Nice. Um, I hear a lot about like Spotify at, versus like Apple. And I don't hear much about Tidal these days. Tidal is trying really hard to keep itself uh, a thing relevant, I guess, but, um, okay. <laughs> well, so David, it's a, yeah, oh boy, now we're getting into economics and I'll, I, I'll keep this short. So David says, if people had to pay the actual real cost of shipping, they'd lose their minds. Um, they do. It's built into the cost of the item, right? So they say, oh, free shipping, you know, and it's like, oh, that's, that's great. But <laughs> you, know, you get to, you get a, a $50 sweater. Um, and if it weren't for shipping, the sweater would be 40 bucks. So you're already paying 10 bucks for shipping. And then they say free shipping. And, you know, it's just not, it's not the way it works. So, um, oh yeah, Jeff, Jeff uh, did DM me earlier. We've been DMing a little bit on Twitter um, about uh, live TV and stuff. So, all right. So let's, um, Let's get to, oh boy. Oh gosh, I wanted to get to the Roku stuff and we will. Okay, so let's see. What do I think about Fire TV stick updates causing problems? Happens all the time. They'll fix it. Everything will be fine. <laughs> I don't know. This happens with Roku, happens with Chromecast, happens with Apple TV every so often. You know, they'll push some update and somebody didn't properly do the QA, the quality assurance on it, and it breaks something. And so they pull the update, they patch it, What you know, take some. 12 to 24 hours and everything will be just fine. Whatever. Um, okay. Yes. If it was a separate line item, they go crazy. That's true. Okay. Oh boy. There is nothing even worth watching on prime video. Couldn't disagree more. <laughs> Jay says there's nothing worth watching on prime video. Um, no way. No way. There's good stuff on there. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, let's talk about Roku. So, a week or two ago, I told you that uh, there were some Roku devices on sale. And now, the sale is even better. Because I think some of the, the devices that they were putting on sale uh, either weren't devices that I really recommend, like the Roku Express. Don't, just don't, don't get it. Don't do the Roku Express. Um, but now oh, they did have like the Roku Ultra was on sale. The Stream Bar was on sale. Uh, but now, now the Stream Bar Pro and the Stream Bar, the Roku Express 4K Plus, the Roku Express 4K Plus, which I do recommend. Uh, and then also the Streaming Stick, uh, streaming, streaming Stick 4K, the 2021 version. So the, the latest version of the streaming stick 4K. These are all on sale. Okay, so we're going to show, I'm, I'm going to show you what these uh, sale numbers are. And then we will, um, uh, let's see, can I hide this? I want to, 
I don't, I, mm. no, no, okay, no, okay, we're going to go the long way, all right, so here we go, the Roku Stream Bar Pro 4K HD, blah, 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 all right, so this is the big one, this is what's on sale right now, 17% off, doesn't sound like all that much, but it's down to 150, which is the lowest price it's ever been, um, and this is supposed to go for a little while, as I recall, I don't have the exact date, but as I read somewhere that this is going to last, um, uh, many weeks, possibly several months. And so it's not urgent that you run out and grab one. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the lowest lowest price it's ever been right now for the Stream Bar Pro. All right, so with that in mind, if I go all the way back up to the top, Eric asked before I even started the pod, or the podcast, yes, this is a podcast. Before I started the live stream, Eric asked, what makes it better? Um, well, let's talk about that. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the Stream Bar Pro uh, versus the stream bar. All right. So what's the difference between the two? If you look at these on a tabletop, are they going to show me, or am I going to have to scroll down? I'll have to scroll down. Oh, can we stop? Can we just not? Can we not? Okay. All right. There we go. All right. There's a, a decent shot, probably like a 55 inch TV with the Roku stream bar down there. Okay. Now, if we look at the stream bar pro, and do the same thing. We come down here. Where's a good shot? There we go. It's probably about the same size TV. So you can see it's a, a little bit longer than the stream bar. Why is that? Well, because the uh, the drivers, the actual speakers inside the stream bar pro are larger. It has a better bass response. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's a good comparison. So 1.9 inch drivers versus two and a half inch drivers. So they are considerably larger um then the others let's see what else does it come with virtual surround sound so it's got a little more uh kind of fancy software in there private listening with included headphones lost remote finder that's actually i love that oh via the mobile app <laughs> okay so it doesn't have a button on there um and the personal shortcut buttons so basically you are getting better speakers um a better bass response and a better remote with this one um, I believe they're the same. They're basically the same streaming device. Uh, you know, they're I, they're roughly speaking a um, streaming uh, Roku streaming stick, 4K plus whatever it's called, <laughs> the, the streaming, the nice streaming stick. It's basically one of those shoved into a soundbar. So the idea behind it is, if you want a Roku device and a soundbar, might as well just get this one. It, you know, it does both save yourself an outlet, um, you know, save yourself some, some wiring, uh, and save yourself some, uh, remote control headaches, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's, I, I do like the idea of the stream bar pro I've tested both of them and the stream bar pro is better, but I've never owned one of them until now. I did in fact, just, uh, just order this yesterday. So I ordered the Stream Bar Pro. What I'm going to do with it? Uh, the reason I'm telling you that is because um, I'm going to do. I'm planning to do a video now. I, I've got the Roku speakers, the uh, subwoofer, and now I'll have the Stream Bar Pro on a TCL Roku TV. Uh, so I'll have this whole Roku setup, and I'm going to do a video or maybe two. Um, talking about the like how it all works, how to set it up. And you know, I could probably make five videos out of this, how to set it up, how it all works, troubleshooting it, um, and whether it's worth the money compared to a, you know, a similarly priced um, sound and TV setup. So, uh, so I've got a lot to go over with that. If you have questions that you would want answered during that video or that series of videos about the Roku kind of ecosystem, the, the, um, TV and sound system ecosystem, then let me know because uh, I would love to uh, try to answer as many questions as I can. Questions that, you know, that are different than what I might ask. So, all right. Okay. Morgan is new. Hello, Morgan. Let's see. Okay. So this, this is a good one. I was thinking about getting one, uh, but I already have a remote control with my Roku. So what's the point of getting one? If I already have, if I already have a Roku, why would I get this one? Okay. That's a, an absolutely fair question. Um, okay. Why would you get one? Well, 
it depends on what kind of Roku you have. I'm, I'm trying to imagine what your setup is. It sounds like um, you, you probably have a device, right? A Roku device. Um, or is it a Roku TV or is it a Roku stick? Um, if it's a Roku stick or, you know, Roku Ultra or Express, you know, some external device, then that device has to, it, it requires an extra outlet. Um, and that might be reason enough to, you know, you'd save, save an outlet. Like if you want to get a stream or sorry, if you want to get a sound bar and you already have a streaming device, then, oh gosh, now I got to find another outlet for this thing and my TV and the, whatever else I have there on the console. Um, so it saves yourself an outlet, a little convenience that way. Um, the stream bar pro and the stream bar, the device inside the, the actual streaming box inside that, uh, uh, stream bar is very nice. Um, and so it's, so if you have like a Roku express, then this would be a major upgrade as far as your streaming, uh, uh, how long you're waiting for shows to load, uh, how long the lag time is every time you click on the remote control and it takes a little time for the, the thing on the screen to move. Um, you'll be upgrading that. So your experience could be upgraded. Uh, save a little bit of wall space, that sort of thing. And it's much more attractive than the, uh, um, than say like the Roku Express or something. So, um, <laughs> you're crazy content machine, five videos, one topic. Oh yeah. You guys, it's, I, I wish I could express how, how difficult it is just to come up with content ideas. <laughs> the execution isn't even as hard, I think, as the, uh, the content strategy. <laughs> um, are you a house husband? I'm yes. I, and I'm married to a house wife. We're both, you know, parents and workers and all that. So, um, but yeah, I do, I do work from home. So, um, all right. It's Roku device. Yeah. All right. So I think I was on the right track there. Um, so, so back to your question, why, what's the point of getting one? I always recommend whatever somebody's streaming setup, whatever somebody's TV setup is, I always recommend that you get a soundbar. Um, it just, it makes the TV experience so, so, so much better. And it, it makes it better for you personally. Now, let's say you've got family in the house or you share walls with neighbors or whatever. Uh, and your concern is, well, you know, I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to bother anybody. And if I get a, if I get a sound bar or the speakers or whatever, then it's going to be too loud. And I understand that. And in, you know, in that case, if you're worried about uh, bass waking up the neighbors or something, don't get the sub. That's fine. Um, but the thing about something like the stream bar pro or the, or the stream bar or the Roku speakers that I have over my shoulder here, um, is that the sound, and it's kind of, let's see if I can explain this. The sound on these devices is more well-rounded, uh, where you have better bass, you have better mid-range sound, you have better uh, top-end sound. And when you have balanced sound like that, you can actually have the volume lower and still be able to understand what's going on. So if you have really tinny TV speakers, you got to really crank that volume if you want to be able to hear what's happening on the TV. And that will actually increase the, the volume um, and be more of a disturbance. Does that make sense? So when you have balanced sound, that's uh, it's, it's a good idea to have a speaker or yeah, a, a sound bar, speakers, whatever. So that being said, I always recommend that people get speakers. If you're a Roku person, then getting the stream bar pro is a great way to kind of combine those two things. So, all right, all right. Um, so Aviar says the audio is exceptional on the stream bar pro to any listening experience. I have had dramatic difference. Watch the animated version of Dante's Inferno. Loved every second visually and auditory. Um, yeah, it's uh, so this stream bar pro let's let's pull this back up full screen here and go back up to the top okay for 150 bucks even for 180 for 150 bucks you can get a lot of different um you can get a lot of different uh sound bars 
But the Roku stream bar at this price is a very good one. I'm not going to say it's the best one. You know, you could probably get one from you know, Bose or whoever that is technically better sound. But as far as what you're getting for the money, this is uh, it, it's fantastic. And um, and it is uh, its own streaming device as well. Most of the others can't claim that. So uh, what's the purpose of USB on Roku? That's a fantastic question. So let's see if. Do we have that? Yeah, there we go. So this one does come with a USB port. It's got optical audio, HDMI, power button, reset. Okay, so what's the point of that USB port? Well, there's a few different things you can do with it. Um, you, One of the most common, let's just talk about maybe the most common thing that you can do with it is um, you plug in the US, uh, a USB drive and then you've got your own DVR. Roku has it set up where if you put in, you know, you've got an antenna or you've got uh, like, or whatever other live options, um, you can set up a live TV DVR using your own USB drive. Uh, another thing you could do with it is uh, to put your own media on there. So let's say it's a large USB drive, you know, you've got a, a terabyte or something and it's uh, plugged into the back of there. Uh, then if you ever look on uh, on Roku, they have the Roku Media Player on your, your list of apps. And that Media Player will allow you to play your movies, your music, display your photos, whatever, using that uh, USB port on the back. So uh, it's it really is quite useful. Um, okay, so Frayden says, diving into Roku's... Uh, content now after they originally said they would never oh their jump into content now after they originally said they would never do it yeah that's that's not a bad idea it's uh, amazing how things change right um that's it yeah it's not a bad idea thank you Frayden. all right um okay <laughs> so okay so the roku stream bar it's surround sound great question all right that's that's an excellent question because it does say somewhere on here da, 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 ba, da, ba, ba, virtual surround okay so oh i'm sorry that's very small there you go virtual surround um on the roku stream bar pro so is this surround sound it is not however it does simulate surround sound uh by by throwing sound over i look i don't i don't understand the technology i'm not a i'm not an audio engineer in that way so uh but yes it, it is not surround sound but it is um virtual surround so it kind of mimics the experience if you do want the full experience of surround sound then check it out you could get the stream bar pro surround setup that's actually dang that's a really great price <laughs> for 300 bucks you could get the stream bar pro and the two speakers uh or you could get this with the with the uh, subwoofer you can do just the stream bar with the subwoofer um this is the setup that i'm actually going to be testing and doing some videos on um and so you can actually you can set it up where yeah you've got the two satellite speakers oh yeah whatever you got the two satellite speakers you got the subwoofer you got the stream bar so the stream bar is in front of you the sub is kind of on the floor and then the satellite speakers will be um off to the side and you can actually set up a surround sound system that way. It's pretty cool. Um, okay. It's a good, good question. Uh -huh. Oh, here's another good question. Speaking of content creation, do you want us sending you articles and ideas for topics? If yes, what's the best way to do that? Saw a bunch of things this week. Thought might be up your alley. Uh, yeah, this is always very much appreciated. Um, I'm able to do this live stream and one video every week here on the channel. I can sometimes do a little more depending on um, depending on the week, depending on the month. Um, but uh, but yes, I am always looking for ideas. The best way to do that is to hit me up on Twitter. Uh, so right there, you can see uh, there it is. That's my Twitter handle. So if you follow me on Twitter, um, then you can uh, you can just tweet articles and, and whatnot at me. You can DM me if you want. Those ones, um, sometimes I see them, sometimes I don't, just because it's set up where I don't get a notification if I'm not following you. <laughs> and so sometimes I'll just go into my DMs and see if anybody sent anything. Um, and then I'll see, oh yeah, no, gosh, it's been four days. This person sent me a DM, you know. So that's a little less reliable, but if you just tweet at me, then I'll, I'll be sure to see it right away. Um, but you are welcome to DM me if you want. But only nice things, only nice things. Uh, so yeah, thank thank you, David, and um, yeah, for all of you who have content suggestions, I'd be more than happy to hear it. 
Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, the regular speakers don't work with the non-stream bar Roku devices. That's true. The, the speakers work with um, Roku TVs and Roku stream bars. So that's a, a great call out. Um, just, yeah, so you know. But they are really good. I actually, I quite like the speakers, even just by themselves. I've, I've used the speakers by themselves for like a year. Um, and it, it's been fantastic. Okay, all right. So let's see, what's, what was, we talked about, oh, that's right, that's right. We talked about the Stream Bar Pro. We talked about the Stream Bar a little bit. Let's pull this one back up. Um, because, oh gosh, can we, can we not, what, what happened? What happened? There we go. Okay, the Roku Stream Bar. So this one is the non-pro version. This is the lesser version, but that's a great price as well. If you don't feel like you can spring for the 150, um, and you, you know you want you want nice sound but not great sound, then this is actually a really good price for this one. And it came down even a little bit more versus what we were talking about a week or two ago. Um, so the stream bar, yes, it, it it's nice. It's not quite as nice. Uh, you know, do with that what you will. But that is also on sale. We got the Roku Express 4K Plus. So I was talking last week. Gosh, I really need to look up. When when was that? Was it two weeks ago we were talking about this stuff? Um, whenever it was, I'll just say last week, I was talking about the Roku Express being on sale. And I said, don't buy it. I don't care what the price is. I don't care if they're, well, okay. If they pay you to take it, then you can just throw it away. <laughs> but, but like, you know, if they're selling it for five bucks, don't buy it. However, the Roku Express 4K Plus is much, much, much better. Um, just as far, obviously it does the, it, it has more features on it. It runs 4k, it does HDR, all that stuff. Uh, but for me, a, a lot of what it comes down to is the response time, both the remote response time and the content response time, how long it takes to load an app, how long it takes to play content, um, how long it takes to type something out on the remote, um, how long it takes for the voice search to work. Of course, there is no voice search on the regular Express. So that's all much, much faster. And so it's a, it's a better experience on the 4K+. Plus. And when we talked about it before, it was still, I think, 40 bucks. And they just dropped that price down to 30. And uh, so now it is much, much more highly recommendable. So the other one, I think you can get the Express for like 20 or 25 bucks and just don't do it. Don't do it. Whatever you do. Um, okay. And then the last one here is the streaming stick 4k. All right. So this one streaming stick 4k This is the 2021 version. Isn't there a 4k plus? Am I crazy? I thought there was a, there was a 4k plus, but this one, yeah, it's 40 bucks. Let me just double check. Um, Roku streaming stick 4k plus. Okay, okay. There we go. Yes, there is a 4K plus. I'm I'm not crazy. However, <laughs> so let's talk about the difference between the two. Uh all right. Um oh. Uh, 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 oh. I know how technology works. Okay. All right. So here we are. <laughs> the streaming stick 4K plus is going for 70 bucks versus 40 for the uh the 4K. Is it is it $30 better, the Streaming Stick Plus? I submit that it is not. So, uh, so yeah, this is a better deal, I think, than the uh, the 4K Plus for 70. Let's see. Here we go. Streaming Stick, Roku Express. Oh, wait. Am I looking at the right thing? Yeah. Streaming Stick, 4K Plus, whatever. Um, Express, 4K, Streaming Stick Plus, whatever. Okay, so this is like the older model, I think. Um, so yeah, uh, out of these, let's see. Oh yeah, it's 27 bucks for the Roku Express. Absolutely not. Under no circumstances should anybody pay $2 less for this than this. I'd say the Express 4K Plus and the Streaming Stick 4K are your best bets out of this list. Okay, there we go. I did it. I covered the deals that I wanted to cover. Okay, uh, <laughs> Craig is always right. Hey, I actually have my mug today. Um, so you guys can get a mug that says Craig is always right. 
and on a on our youtube channel if you just go down below the videos uh should have a link to the the teespring store with some reviews.org merch um and yes i do drink uh tea out of that mug so uh <laughs> let's see um an ethernet port would have been a nice feature to see on these i think you're talking about stream bars and uh, somebody asked what the what the point of the USB port is. That's one thing you can actually do with the USB port. You can get a converter um, uh, where you plug Ethernet into a USB converter, plug that in, and then um, uh, it works that way. So you could do that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree. It would be nice, especially on the Pro. It's like, hey, if you're going to call something Pro, if you're going to charge me 150 bucks for it. Throw an Ethernet port in there. That would be nice. Okay. Uh, Joe got the regular stream bar at 99 bucks after a year. I believe it was an excellent purchase. That's good to know. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great device. It's, you know, again, the, the sound isn't as premium as the Pro, but it's so much better than what you get just on your TV, right? So, um, okay, let's see. Who else we got here? Artie says, does the stream bar integrate well with a TCL Roku TV when using a fire stick uh okay all right so let me see if i understand this right is the does it okay so you've got a a tcl roku tv you've got a fire stick plugged into the back and now you got the stream bar um and so uh, what you're wanting to know is does the stream bar still work when you are using the fire tv is that right um, if so, that's a great question. It's a fantastic question. I don't know the answer to it yet, to be perfectly honest, but I'm about to. Um, I imagine it would. Um, I've got the Roku speakers. You can kind of see one of them. Eh, tickle that thing right there. Yeah, you can see one of the Roku speakers on the wall back there. Um, and it just, it, it uh, pairs with the TV itself. And so then I can use my Chromecast, I can use my Fire Stick, I can use my Apple TV, whatever. Uh, and the sound still plays from the Roku speakers. It's not like it stops working once I change the input. Uh, so I imagine that will be the same thing for the stream bar, um, but I, I don't know that for certain. But that's a great question. And when I get the, the stream bar pro in um, and I'm kind of doing an exploration of that, that's a, a good question for me to answer. All right. T-Mobile TV Vision Hub dongle works great. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Uh, they're just trying to get rid of both. Yeah, no, totally. It's it's offensive to me actually when I walk through like Home Depot or Walmart or something and I see the, <laughs> the Roku Express and they're charging thirty or thirty five bucks for it and I'm like, this is literally you'd have to pay me to take this. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Craig, any lag with the Bluetooth Roku speakers? Audio and video off 300 milliseconds. No, I haven't noticed this. Uh, mine have been perfect. I, I Like I said, I plugged them in a year plus ago, um, and they I've never had an issue with them. I'd be curious to hear if you have. Um, and yeah, it's not an issue when I use other inputs, uh, not an issue when I play video games. I've never had a problem with it. So, all right. Yes, it, okay, so the, the stream bar does work with other inputs. Yeah, I, I figured that would be the case, but uh, still still a good question. This may be a stupid question, I doubt it, uh, but why would I need a Roku 4K Plus if I already have a Roku TV? You don't. <laughs> That's a great question. You don't. Uh, the only exception to this is that as, as the TV's age, it depends on your Roku TV. So... <laughs> Um, if you had like one of the first TCL Roku TVs that came out in 2016 or 17, whatever it was, it's been years ago now. If you have one of the first models, it may have hardware components, um, uh, capabilities that make it tough for that TV to keep up with um, updates, uh, new technologies that come out, new broadcast technologies, whatever. Uh, and so if you have a, a very old Roku TV, then it may make sense to grab a new device to throw in there. And if you do that, it's really not that big a deal. There's a video I put out uh, sometime last month, uh, Roku Tips and Tricks. And one of the tips and tricks was 
um, how to like how to set it up where when you turn on your TV, it automatically opens up a certain input. Uh, so for instance, if I want to run my Chromecast on here and I, I prefer my Chromecast, then when I hit the power button on my TV, I can set it up to automatically turn on the Chromecast input. Um, and you can do that with another Roku as well. So if you if you get a nice uh, Express 4K Plus or Streaming Stick Plus or whatever, then you plug that into your Roku TV and you can just tell it whenever you turn on, go to this input. Um, and then, you know, you just have a brand new device. So, uh, so no, not a stupid question at all. Um, I think that's a great question. And it is kind of one of the, one of the issues with smart TVs as such is that they, you know, a lot of us grew up with, um, you know, a TV in the basement that had been there for 20 years, <laughs> or, you know, you know what I mean? Like you just got this brick of a TV and the thing weighed 85 pounds, uh, you know, and it was 32 inches. And, um, but that thing would just go forever. As long as you treated it nice, it would treat you nice forever. The same can't quite be said of smart TVs because of the software issues um, where you're going to have to eventually probably get a device to keep, uh, to keep it smart enough. Right. So, um, eARC or ARC port? Um, oh, oh, I think you're saying um, that the stream bar works. Yes, this this is true. Yeah, if you have a, a TV with a, an ARC, an ARC port, um, that's your H. If you look on the back of your your TV, one of the HDMI ports probably says HDMI ARC, um, and I, it's like audio return channel. I, I can't remember uh, something return channel. Basically what it means is that the signal can go both ways. Um, and so when you have something like a sound bar, that's the best one to plug it into for sure. Yeah, it's a good call out. Um, is the TCL Roku TV a good quality? I'm thinking about getting one. Yes, it is. Um, it's T TCL is an interesting one. It I guess I shouldn't just blanketly say, yes, it is. It depends on what TV you get. If you get one of the ultra cheap ones, then it'll be pretty cheap. Um, that being said, it's still good. You know, it still plays in 4K. The the issue that you might run into with some of the cheaper TCL TVs, some of the older models, uh, is that the color range isn't as good as it might be. Uh, and so the blacks aren't as deep. Uh, the, the whites are, you know, they're, they're not as vibrant. The colors aren't as vibrant. Um, and that has to do with the technology behind the actual uh, glass panel up front. Um, stuff that I kind of understand but not really <laughs> so uh in answer to your question tcl makes great tvs um even the cheap ones they, they are going to be cheap compared to other tvs but they're still it's worth the money you know you can get a 55 inch tv these days for 400 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever it is and, and that's it's going to be good um but you can now with tcl if you look around with their newer models um they they do some series that are actually legit really nice um it's not not going to be as nice as you know like a, a you know oled this that whatever three thousand dollar 85 inch whatever uh but yeah you're still going to get you're going to get a quality tv from tcl how's that um i think that's fair to say uh, okay, Billy says, Craig, I have the Roku Stream Bar Pro, Roku wireless speakers, Roku subwoofer with Fire Stick 4K Max and Shield on the same TV. My sound is so awesome from every device. There you go. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm setting up. I'm gonna do some videos on that. So um yeah, the ultimate Roku sound experience, right? Uh so that's you said let's see on the same TV. So I assume it's a Roku TV because you had the speakers, but I don't know for sure. Uh Let's see. Stacy Chris says, if I already have a Roku TV, would the Roku stream bar be worth it? Or would you get a different stream bar? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think so for 150 bucks, if we pull that back up. All right. There's my stream bar. Okay. The Roku stream bar pro going for 150 bucks right now. Um, if you look up, let's, you know what? Oh, whoops. Wrong button, wrong button. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna do a little search here on Amazon. Okay, let's do a search for, uh, you know what, here, I'll put this up on screen while we're doing it. Okay, 
So let's do stream bar, uh, stream bar. Uh, no, not stream bar, sorry, sound bar, sound bar. Okay, so we got a sound bar. Now let's come over here and look at the price range. Let's say minimum was 135 to 170. Okay, so that'll give us that 150 price range. All right, so <laughs> what are we? Okay, so we're looking at a few Polk options, a Yamaha for 150. Yamaha for 180. Okay, built-in subwoofers. Uh, maybe, maybe. Okay, never heard of that brand before. Okay, so uh, don't get this one. Okay, <laughs> don't get that one. Uh, all right. Is it better? It, okay, so the question is, if I already have a Roku TV, would the Roku stream bar be worth it? Or would you get a different sound bar, I assume you mean? Um, hmm. Okay, a couple things to consider here. You don't, with the stream bar pro, with the Roku stream bar pro, you do not get a subwoofer. Okay, so is that important to you? That's the first question you should ask. Is the subwoofer actually important to you? Um, if it is, then that's, yeah, something to consider. You're not going to get one here. Uh, but you do get a, a good bass response. Like I said, I've used this Stream Bar Pro before. You do get a good bass response. You're just not, it's not going to rumble you the way a subwoofer would. Um, so already, you know, like this one, I, I actually did test this for the channel uh, a couple of years ago. And the S2 is a very good sound bar and sub combo. I liked it quite a bit. Um, so if you want the sub, maybe that would be better. Okay, other things to consider though. So there's the subwoofer, yes, but also the fact that this is Roku branded. If you've got, as you say, I already have a Roku TV. Would the Roku stream bar be worth it? Well, if you're if you're working from a Roku TV, it's difficult for me to express just how easy setup is um, with these Roku devices. When you get something like the um, like the Polk, you gotta, it, it does take a little bit of finesse, a little bit of finagling in the settings menu of your Roku TV to get it to work just right. Um, if you are tech savvy, if you're used to doing a lot of these setups, um, I, I can't say that I'm the most tech savvy person in the world, right? But I do, I test streaming devices and TV stuff all the time. And so um, even me, after a, a few of these sound bars, I was like, man, some of these are a little bit tough to set up. It is, like I said, it's difficult for me to adequately describe how easy it is to set these up. You plug it in and it does all the work for you in the background. It, you know, syncs up the audio. It, uh, you know, plays nice with your remote and everything uh, because they're all Roku devices. It's a bit like, you know, the Apple ecosystem. Everything just kind of works together. Um, and and this is the same way. So, yeah, so there are a couple things to consider. It, would I get a different stream bar? Like I said, it kind of depends on whether you want the sub at that price. So how's that? I, I hope that's an adequate answer. All right. Let's see what else we got. Uh, and heard any news about a newer version of the Ultra? I'm thinking about upgrading from a 2021. Didn't want to miss out on a newer Ultra version. I haven't heard any rumblings about it yet. Um, if I were to to guess uh oh boy okay there's there, let's see there's what 65 of you on this stream right now so i'm not i'm not making a giant pronouncement to the world <laughs> so i i don't know maybe maybe one day i'll make this prediction officially on some video but my guess my gut feeling is that Roku will probably start to shift away from the Roku Ultra. Oh, yeah, that's my guess. I'm not ready to make this a full fledged like Craig is always right prediction, but that's kind of that's kind of how I feel it going. Or they're going to concentrate more on the smaller devices, the sticks, and the TVs, especially the TVs. Um, so I could be wrong, but but I'm usually not. <laughs> so how's that? How's that? Um, so should you, you don't want to miss out on a newer ultra version. Yeah, I know what you mean. But honestly, the other devices are 
so good now that like it, the the difference between uh like you had the uh, what, on this end you had the Roku Express and then the streaming stick and then the Ultra and the 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 difference in quality between each level was a chasm and that's just not quite the case anymore. Yes, the Roku Ultra is better than the streaming stick. And yes, the streaming stick is better than the uh, the the Express. I should say the Express 4K Plus, just to be very clear. <laughs> but but the differences aren't as great now. So the so the Roku Ultra when it came out, I did my first review on it. It was blowing my mind with how great it was compared to the other stuff. Um, and I, it's, that's just not going to be the case uh, anymore. So. If it were me, I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about holding out. They're so cheap now. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by this one. Hi, UK Roku is boring. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, this is always something good to keep in mind. Roku has thirty-eight percent market share. It's this is usually like really relevant when it comes to um, carriage disputes, you know, like when Roku was fighting with Google or they're fighting with Amazon or something. And it's like, you know, compared to these compared to Google, Roku is, a, you know, their <laughs> their annual revenue is a rounding error. Right. But when it comes to this, this niche, when it comes to streaming device uh, market penetration, then, yeah, Roku is a behemoth. So they do have a lot of negotiating power in those situations. Um, okay. Oh boy, an LED, LED projector. Nice, 130 inches. Yikes, that's that's nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> this I'm getting so you're first of all, you're welcome. He says, Thank you so much for answering uh, my question. This is fun. First time anybody's answered directly. That's it's uh, one of the things I enjoy most about these live streams. Um, Sometimes I, I want to do more of a show, um, you know, it, uh, whatever. It's something akin to what other channels do, but uh, I like the interaction. I hope you guys do too. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, speaking of the old TVs, <laughs> absolute tanks. Uh, Zenith. I don't, I don't remember what brand mine was, but I remember... Um, a, a, call it around the year 2000 uh, and, and a bit before that I had this old TV it had like metal buttons along the bottom it wasn't quite old enough to be a dial TV but it was very close um, and that was the TV that I played NES on all through the 90s um, and a little bit today when I go to my parents house still got that NES hooked up to that TV still and it just goes they just go like I said you treat it nice it treats you nice it's amazing so all right. So Paul says, I have three devices, the TV, the TiVo, the On, and the Fire Stick 4K. Of those, I, I mean, the On, it, it depending, if, if it's the stick, it's terrible. If it's the box, it's only just not great. <laughs> but I, I, was, I was underwhelmed with my time with the On devices. Uh, the TiVo I like quite a bit, but it ended up really quickly getting superseded by the Chromecast. The Chromecast kind of does what I wanted devices to do as far as collating your uh, your uh, lists and making good recommendations. But the TiVo, they did it first. They just didn't do it best. Uh, but I do like that device quite a bit. And the Fire Stick 4K. So out of all these, I'd say the Fire Stick 4K is probably the best one. Um, but I do have a soft spot in my heart for the TiVo. Okay. <laughs> That's, I just want to make sure I'm not uh, missing anybody's uh, comments. Uh, first of all, Diego, welcome back. Happy Friday to you. Uh, let's see. The higher-end Roku TVs, Frayden says, are like a TV with a Roku Ultra built in anyways. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, I think I'm tempted to walk back there and look, but I think this TV has an Ethernet port. I'm pretty sure it does. They, I'm pretty sure all of them do. So anyway. Um, all right. How much is the Roku bar? I need better audio and a new Roku stick. Well, in that case. So let's end on this. Um, we'll go kind of full circle. We'll go back to the beginning um, and we'll talk about what the deals are that you could be looking at um, for the next little while. So 
And Miguel asks, how much is the Roku bar? I need better audio and a new Roku stick. Um, the stream bar pro is going for 150. The regular stream bar is going for a hundred. Um, so both great. Uh, this one, the pro, it really does come with a little bit more. So if we scroll down here to the, uh, comparison, it has bigger speakers, two and a half inch speakers versus 1.9 inch. Um, they both do Dolby. They both do all this stuff, uh, virtual surround sound, which does sound pretty cool. It's not, it's not the same as surround sound, but it does a pretty good uh, mimicry of it, I suppose. Um, the remote is better um, on the Stream Bar Pro. So if you're wondering what the difference is, that is the difference. So 100 versus 150. Both of them come with a very good Roku streaming device built into it. Um, so it's you're not going to get uh, much of a difference there. One thing that you might consider, let's see. Nope. I, I, will, I wondered if the uh, regular stream bar would have the USB port. Of course it does. And there it is. So, um, yeah, both have, both have USB. So you're good to go on both of those. So, yeah, it just kind of comes down to how premium do you want your audio to be? Um, I, I, you know, I should actually call out the remote, though. If we, if we look close at the stream bar pro. Okay, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Um, that one and two right there on the remote, personal shortcut buttons. I'm, oh, whoops, sorry. There we go. <laughs> That's a little easier to see. The personal shortcut buttons, um, what are these? So down here, the Netflix, Disney, Apple TV Plus, Hulu, those are the, the basically ad space that they've sold to these companies that, you know, Hulu wants to encourage you to sign up for Hulu because it's so easy. If, you know, if I can just push one button and go there. Um, and so all Roku remotes have those, but not all of them have that one and two. So that personal shortcut buttons um, allows you to program something else in. So if you use HBO Max or Prime Video or Spotify or whatever, um, you can program those to open up any program that you like. Uh, and, you know, if you've used Roku for a while, you get to know that like, yeah, it's it's actually kind of nice if you if you're in, let's say you're in. Netflix and you want to get to Hulu, then being able to press that Hulu button, you know, it just instantly closes Netflix and opens Hulu versus going to the home screen, waiting for the home screen to load. And then you click over there and you got to find the thing you click over. It's not that big a deal, but you know, it, it can be nice. So the question is whether that's worth, you know, the extra 50 bucks for the premium audio and the premium uh, remote. So you'll have to answer that for yourself. Regardless, great question. All right, you guys, I'm going to start the process of wrapping this up. As I do, I just uh, want to remind you about the uh, weekly giveaways. This week's winner of the uh, $50 Netflix uh, gift card was Emily Rumlal. Uh, so Emily, congratulations. We'll be emailing you. And for the rest of you, yeah, please check out the description. There should be a link um, in the description below me on YouTube. I think it's above me on uh, Facebook. I think that's right. Um, Anyway, yeah, go there. Super easy to enter this this week. It's going to be a bi-weekly thing. So uh, in two weeks, I'll announce the winner for the Disney Plus one-year subscription. Um, so that's worth even a little bit more than this one was. Just saying. Uh, oh, I guess depending on <laughs> how much you like Disney Plus. So yeah, if you're, if you're already signed up for Disney Plus, that's okay. You can get uh, a year toward your, your subscription. So there you go. Um, uh, let's see. So yeah, make sure you do that. And I will answer just a couple more questions as I'm wrapping this up. So, uh, so I apologize if I missed any questions. I can't, uh, can't necessarily do all of them. Um, okay. Oh, interesting. Joe says Wi-Fi in the stream bar has been better than on any of their sticks. That's good to know. Uh, I will. That's, that's probably a good thing for me to test. So that's nice. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, Okay. Let's see. I'm considering buying the Roku speakers, so I'll let you know. All right. Maybe that's answering a question that I didn't uh, didn't catch before. Anyway. All right. So, everybody, thank you again for joining. Happy Friday, as we've said a few times. Um, if you're on the East Coast, then you are, boy, you're almost done with your day. And uh, congratulations to you. If you're like me, you're on the West Coast or Mountain Time, then uh, we hang in there. We've got a few more hours left. And then it's the freaking weekend. 
and uh, we can all have a great time, which I hope you do. Uh, please make sure you are subscribed, uh, like the videos, and and support the channel by uh, by hitting the bell icon and coming on and uh, supporting those videos when they come out. We come out with videos on different topics just about every day. Uh, so any support you can give us would be great. We'd love to have it. Um, make sure you share the videos that you really enjoy uh, on your own social media channels. Anyway, all right. Thanks for watching today, everybody. I will see you at the same time next week.